I'm starting with a fresh install of SOLIDWORKS 2020 and we're going to just look at the layout, the GUI, how SOLIDWORKS interacts and how we should interact with SOLIDWORKS. When you open up SOLIDWORKS for the first time, you should get a welcome dialog here. You'll have a lot of your documents that you're working on. I just installed it so it doesn't have any documents. And then you can create parts and assemblies and drawings and, and do further from there. So we'll just kind of jump right in. We'll just click part and it'll ask us the dimensions for our part. Let's stick to inches for now since that's pretty common. And then if you look here, we'll choose the ANSI standard. That's the American standard. Hit OK. And now we've just used basically a template to create how our drawing is going to be uh, created. When you load up your first part for the first time, you have some of your plugins up here at the top. You've got a full toolbar by right clicking up here and you can get any of the other toolbars that you're looking for. So if you're working in sheet metal, you can just click the sheet metal and it'll pop up a toolbar and you can move them as you need to. Okay, we'll mostly jump between features and sketch to get started. If you like things in different orientations, you can always move these ribbons around. On the left hand side of our screen is our feature manager. This area with this design tree uh, allows us to look at every single piece of our puzzle. So when we design a 3D object, it will be mostly made of 2D sketches and 3D features. We're going to try in our practice to use a lot of 2D sketches or break down each feature. So that way we have a lot of things to manipulate and they're all individual and isolated. If we try to put a lot of stuff in the drawing, then we've got to go back and kind of find that stuff. So it's like folders within folders versus one giant folder that you have to go through. So we're going to uh, use this a lot and I'll, I'll show you how that works. You can come through and then you'll also have a property manager as the next tab. And we'll see that when we make our first sketch. So that allows us to select something, adjust its properties, or look at an operation and see what it's doing. Okay, as we roll through, there's some other things, how this part's configured, okay? And then display manager, if we wanna add like, make the part plastic and add some light, there's all kinds of cool stuff that we can do. So we won't go too far down these, these menus, but know that you can scroll through them. Okay. Our orientation here is set up in this configuration. The Z is actually pointing towards us. So when we look at an X, a Y, and a Z plane, that gets us our three dimension. If you look at a box, you can only see three sides of it. So this makes sense. We've got a front plane, we've got a top plane, and a right plane. The front plane here is our X and Y plane. So if you look at the bottom, we've got X and Y. The top plane turns out to be our X and then our Z, that long X axis there. And then the right plane turns out to be our Y and our Z. And between those three planes, we should be able to get every facet of a three-dimensional model. Okay, we can use our mouse to right click, uh, I'm sorry, to center click your scroll wheel and you can move things around and look at that triad in the bottom corner. See how that's moving around for us? Try to get it back to its normal orientation if you can. It's fun to play around and get used to it. And that's a good test. If you'd like to pan things, if you hold shift and click the middle mouse, it will just zoom in and out. If you hold control and hold the middle mouse, it will pan your object or move your object. And if you hold alt, it will rotate it along an axis. Okay, again, shift and the middle mouse will zoom in and out. Control and the middle mouse will pan your object or move it around. Alt and your middle mouse will rotate it around an axis. If you lose your views, you have this heads up display here. So you can always zoom to fit. Now I'll take everything you draw and put it right into the area. Zoom to area allows you to select something and then it will zoom there. 
previous view allows you to go back. So if you were working on one side of an object and you want to go back and forth to those sides, you can uh, use previous view. You can cut apart into sections so that you can see inside of it. Um, and then in this drop down here, we actually get all of our uh, views here, all of our orientations. So if you want to look at a face of our whole 3D object, you can. You can say, I, I want to look at the front plane. And that's just the view, and that's the view that our front plane sits on. So it's slightly different. The front plane actually exists as itself. The view for the front plane is this view here. If you look here, you can't see the front plane, because now I'm looking at it from the side, because I'm on that y and x plane. Okay, so mess around with this. You can uh, still rotate that and try to figure out your views. And then you can also get these isometric views as well. Okay. If you click this, you can change views. So you can just click isometric, get yourself back home. Spacebar will also get you to that view cube and orientation layout. So you got a couple of things to look for. This arrow pointing up is normal too. So if you select something and you want to go normal too, I'll say, ah, let's do the top plane. And I want to go normal to that top plane. I select normal too. And now it goes normal to the plane I selected. All right, the next tab here allows us to do shading on a model or wireframe. When we create a model, I'll pull that back up. And we can hide and show different items, like if I want a grid or not, uh, which we'll use this quite a bit when we're, uh, when we're working. There's all my primary planes, and I can turn them off. The last thing here uh, allows you to change if, if you're interested to perspective and turn shadows off. So if you're in the shaded mode, one of these two, you can turn shadows off and it'll do a little bit better for your graphics processor. Okay, that's the basics here. You do have a toolbar on this side. You can pull up resources. Our design library will get into later all kinds of parts and components. We can look through files uh, on our computer. We can create uh, drawings, uh, we can go through our appearances, we can create scenes where we want a shot from this side or a shot from that side, um, things like that. So uh, this toolbar here will also help us out. And then on the top, way at the top, if you click the SolidWorks, you've got your normal menu here. So that'll, that'll slide over. And uh, you have your normal file, save, open, things like that. If you need help with something or you want to look up something, the documentation is really great. At the top right, there is a question mark and you can click help and then you can do SolidWorks uh, help. And it pulls up the entire help documentation here. And you've got quite a bit of information to pull from. This is also online. Okay. So let's get started and draw a part. I'm going to bring my orientation back to isometric view and I'll select nothing so that it looks like the original shape. One thing that we want to do, especially if we're working in inches, is at the bottom right, we can sort of change our units. So we can click IPS and if we wanted to work in millimeters, we could click that. But for now, I'm going to hit edit document units. And if you look here for my length, I only have two decimal places. That's not really going to suffice if I'd like to do an eighth of an inch. That's 0.125. So all I need to do is hit this drop down here and click 0.123. From there, I'll hit OK. What I've done now, if I go back to document units, is adjusted this template. So if you look at drafting standard, it now says ANSI modified. So we if we go back to ANSI, it'll change it to two decimal places. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm also going to leave this blank. I haven't done anything. And what I'm going to do is go File. I'm going to save this as. And we're going to save this as a part dot file. So scroll down and find part templates and make sure it's a part dot file. That part that file will then be loaded into your SOLIDWORKS template file, and then you can use that as you move forward. So I'm going to hit save. And now just to show you when I go home, I've got that template here or. Or if I go open. 
I've got my part dot there. Or I could say new and it's going to ask me and I can click advanced and there's my template right there. So there's a couple ways to find that. Normally when you hit the new file and you hit advanced, it'll show up all of your templates, which is really nice. All right, now that we have a new empty file and it's made from our template, just make sure you don't overwrite your template. So if you want to, you can do file and save as, and then you can save this as a file for your project. And that will save now as a SOLIDWORKS part. Now we'll just draw a simple part here just to get two operations, get you using the tool. You go to the sketch menu. We're always going to start with a 2D sketch. So click sketch and then select whatever plane you'd like to start on. We're going to start on the X and Y plane. Okay, so it's like we're looking at a sheet of paper. Now that we've enter the X and Y plane, make sure that your orientation is front and you're on the front plane. We'll select a corner rectangle and we're going to hover over our origin here and find that yellow icon. Once you get that point and that yellow icon, that signifies that you're coincident with the origin. So we're going to start drawing at zero, zero. I'll click one time drag my mouse up and then I will randomly click in space. What we've done now is created a few co uh, relations. So we have a coincident here, we have a horizontal, we've got a vertical, a horizontal, and a vertical. So all those green marks are relations which define our part. That is super important. If you look down here, it says under defined. We need to define all our 2D sketches before moving into 3D. So we'll hit the green check over here on the left, and we're gonna dimension this out. If you notice these lines are blue, that means that they're not defined. These black lines are. So let's click this line, move our mouse up, and click one more time. We can now define this line. I'm gonna make a four inch long rectangle. I'll hit the green check mark, and now it's using the units from my document, which I denoted as inch, pounds, and seconds. I'll hit smart dimension one more time. I will now click this edge, click it again, and let's make that 1.5. Press enter or hit the green check, and now I have fully defined my part. I've got a length, a width, and a position at the origin. That's most important. Once you've fully defined your sketch here, you can hit exit sketch at the top and you should see your sketch. You should also see your sketch in the feature manager. When you click it, you'll get your annotation. So you'll see your dimensions. We're now going to go to the feature ribbon and we'll hit extruded boss base. We need something to extrude. If you noticed it moved us over to the property manager tab, that's a good sign. So you can click your contour here, or if you are unsure or can't find the selection, you can hit this drop down and it pulls up your whole feature manager within your view pane here. So you can click sketch and now it's selecting the whole sketch. Right now we want a blind. So we want it to just go from the sketch plane out until we tell it to stop. So let's do 3.5. We'll hit the green checkbox. And now we've just created a rectangular prism. Rotate it by pushing in your middle mouse or holding shift and pushing in. And you can zoom in and out by scrolling with your wheel. That's a pretty simple shape. It's good practice to always rename your objects. You can slow double click. So I'll just call mine base extrude rectangle. And that way, anything related to this is now defined by this base extrude rectangle. So when I want to use properties from 
this operation, this feature, it's tied to that name. So it's really good practice. Keep that in mind. The last thing we'll do just to set it up is we'll go to sketch and let's cut a hole in the center of this. So we'll use a circle. We'll click the top of our part. And notice how my origin is over here. We've now referenced the top of our part as our plane. We're not selecting one of those default planes. So it doesn't flip automatically. So in order to do that, we can right click our sketch and just hit normal too. Now I'm centered on my part. I will take a circle and I'm going to draw it anywhere. I will smart dimension out this circle by clicking the edge and I can get a diameter measurement. I'll make this a one inch circle. Now I need to place this on the face here. It's still under defined. By selecting Smart Dimension one more time, I can click the uh, center of the circle and the edge of the existing part, and I can set my dimension here. If I can't remember what my previous dimension is, that's no problem. You can cancel out of that dimension, and you can always go to Evaluate and Measure and click Align. It's four inches, so I want to split that in half. I'll go back to my sketch menu, and I will double click this number so that I can change it to two. Then I know that it's center. I recall that this number was three, so I'll make sure I select the center in this line. If you get stuck in a, in a selection like this, press escape. And then you can click Smart Dimension again to reset. We'll click the center and the edge. And this is 1.5. Uh, 1.75. And now that should be centered on the part. While you're in sketch mode, you can rotate and make sure everything looks good. It's black, so it's fully defined at the bottom. We'll get out of our dimension tool. We'll exit the sketch at the top. We'll click features. And instead of doing an extruded boss face, we're going to do an extruded cut. This extruded cut is going to go through our whole part. So instead of selecting blind, I'll click the down menu, hit through all. I don't need a number. And it already selected my sketch. Remember, if it didn't select yours, you can go down and select your sketch, or you can click the contour here and make sure that you click the right area. I'll hit the green check, and now I should have just placed a hole through the part. I will rename this. And I've completed that basic part. Don't forget to save your work and you've got a good start on how to use SOLIDWORKS and how we're going to use it for creating 3D models in class.